Buckle up and get ready for a fun ride. It's about to go down. With over 20,000 episodes of the best outdoor shows. That's the cool thing. It's got something for everybody. We're the home of the adventurous. The champions. These guys are the best of the best. The legends. There are bigger things happening out here than just shooting bullets at animals. Get three months of My Outdoor TV for only a dollar a month when you use promo code YouTube1. I'm Mike Robinson. I'm part chef, part restaurateur, and 100% hunter gatherer. I believe that sustainable wild food is the best food. So I only take what nature allows to create amazing, delicious dishes in my award-winning restaurants. Hunting with skill, good. cooking with style, that's farming the wild. This time, I'm taking a break from my lowland fallow cull for a restful couple of days. Jeez, I feel half a stone lighter. Hunting stags with my mate Andy in the highlands of Scotland. It's a lot of fur here for the next shot, and he was always facing away from me, so I didn't want to risk it. To make a Greek family classic. Do you know what's in it? <laughs> I'm guessing he's kind of used to me. It's amazing. I probably say that every time, but it's really good. <laughs> Farming the Wild is brought to you by Forlo, for the love of hunting. These are the granite peaks and cold, dark locks of Westeros. This, of course, is the home of the Monarch of the Glen. You know, that famous painting by Landseer, the guy up on his rock looking like this, right. the red stag. Now, the whole thing about hunting stags in Scotland is the opposite to normal male deer hunting holds true. Here in Scotland, the traditional trophy was the worst deer on the hill. So the whole thing is about take out the worst you can, management, and, and truly it's about the experience and the pleasure of being in these mountains. Once the ancestral home of the Clan Mackenzie, this remote estate is now home to a herd of red deer that have been managed here for nearly 200 years. And that began when the Fairy Tale Lodge was built back in the 1830s by a Lancashire coal magnate. This is Letter U. And the trophies that adorn the walls aren't the heraldic candelabras that you might expect to see, because the glory of this estate's history, with its herd of red deer, is kept in a hallowed place, known simply as the Bone Room. Andy, this is the data records of this piece of land. Every stag that's been harvested for the last 40, 50 years is in here, together with their jaw bones, which tell us the progression of their age and the wear on their teeth. You've got some real good ones, but you've got switches, you've got stags with just four points. And I mean, if you just look at the stag like that guy up there, with that long, long, long tine with nothing coming off it on the sides. It's almost a bayonet. Just two and a half foot long daggers. If you were another stag, they'd just kill you. Yeah. And it is a genetic predisposition. So if you take that out and you relentlessly take those stags out, you should eventually reduce the amount of switches on the hill. And that helps the rest of the deer. Because you don't want your pride of the hill, your 12 or 14 point perfect royal stag, being killed by some sneaky devil with nasty sharp points running in from the side, yeah. you know? The last thing you want to find is the switch is the last stag alive up on the hill. You're not wrong. So what we're here to try and do is to take a stag. Who knows what we're going to find? Right. But that's the whole objective of this. It's, it's harvesting and pure management. And there's not even a talk about big antlers as trophies, because that's not what it's about. The deer are now managed by head stalker Paul, with a little help today from his son PJ. And to get to them, we need to walk. There's no quad bikes or Argo cats on this estate, just your own two legs and a well-trodden path. See anything, Paul? 
we've, we've spotted some stags up the hill. Uh -huh. They're happy up the, the steep bit. Where they always start. <laughs> <laughs> so because of the way the wind is today, we're going to have to go round about them and come in for the top. Is that a switch on top of the ridge? It looks like one. I mean, he's got decent antlers, they're like that. And I can't see any, any tops to them. So if he's a mature animal without tops and long, long, tight, long brows, then he's a cull animal, right? Yeah. It's amazing that they still kind of habitually with only man as their only predator go to the top of the mountain in the quite possible worst place to be. It's because they know how fit this bloke is and now he walks <laughs> up hills, that's why. I know that, they're running the way the midges are, that's why they're up there, eh? It looks a bit scary going up there. Paul's putting the rifle on his pack, which has got like a quick release mechanism, because we may come around an edge and a shootable stag may be right there. Um, so we've got to be ready all the time. It's also quite hazardous ground. A lot of rocks, steep little gullies, ankle breakers, you name it. So we've all got to be pretty careful as well. You, you really don't want to break something up here on a mountaintop. It's, uh, it's, it's quite strong ground. A great snack for a day on the hill like this is jerky. I like to use the more grainy meat of older animals, which is perfect for this simple treatment. Cut the meat into even strips across the grain so you can bite off chunks when it's cured. They get a marinade of ginger, salt, garlic, brown sugar, red wine vinegar, maple syrup, soy sauce, black pepper, and paprika. Once that's had an hour or so to work its magic, these shiny strips go straight onto the bars of a hot Traeger for three hours, leaving you dried and cured strips of deliciousness. Perfect for your pack on the hill. We hope you enjoyed this free preview from My Outdoor TV. To continue watching, start your free trial now. Then get your first three months for $1 a month when you use promo code YouTube1.